this Porsche Cayman uh, PDK. It's the 981. Right, here we go. No, we're just spinning up. This, I think, could well be my favorite car I've ever had at Vera Motors. It's a seriously nice car. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. That was a different introduction, wasn't it? I feel like you should mix it up every now and then. Right, we are sat at the desk of dodgy, risky purchases. And uh, as you may have seen in other videos now, I'm trying to buy stuff with big margins. I'm a big margin man now. I'm a big, big man in general, you know, but I want to be a big margin man um, because we need to cover the overheads. We need to start making some big profits. I don't want to be selling stuff a little. 1500 quid margins that whittle down to absolutely nothing once all the overheads are taken out. With that in mind, it also plays into the fact that I get to buy stuff that I think is really cool, like this Porsche Cayman uh, PDK. It's the 981. I've been wanting to buy one of these for ages. I think they're amazing value now. I've never actually driven a Porsche with a PDK gearbox either, which I meant to be incredible. So if I could get this, that would be amazing. What we're looking at is a 2013 2.7 Cayman, like I said, it's a 781, white, black wheels. Um, what was the mileage? 65,000, so fairly decent. It's not, you know, brand new, but I don't think it's over the top for one of these at that sort of age. 11 years old now. It doesn't look 11 years old. That's the amazing thing about it. Um, yeah, it looks really nice. Just looking through the pictures. I've wanted to try one of these for ages. Um, all looks pretty good, nice, modern inside. You've got your sat nav, heated seats by the looks of it, dual zone climate control. Maybe not dual zone, you wouldn't need it in that, so small, would you? Looks like it's had a repair on the seat, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, might not be the end of the world. Four previous owners, not unusual for a car like this. It's had six services, it's got MOT until February next year, and it's a grade two, so it's really good. Uh, what's it say? Brand new, it's 41,000 pounds. Optional equipment on this thing, 9,868. So let me tell you what it's had. 20 inch Carrera classic wheels. Um, the Porsche Doppel Kaplung, which is the PDK gearbox. That was 2,000 uh, pounds. Porsche communications management with extended navigation module, 1,986. Now that's the same thing, but obviously 10 years older. It was in our Porsche 911 that the chap didn't give us back when he returned his car via the finance company because he wanted to reject it. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. What a nightmare that was. That's, you know, done and dusted now. Anyway, partial leather seat, 745 pounds. Preparation for a mobile phone, 445 pounds. Imagine that, imagine paying 445 pounds just to have your phone to connect to your Porsche. Like, come on. Sound package, plus including CD storage box, 396 pounds. Park assist rear, 348 pounds. Universal audio interface. ICW PCM 3.0, whatever the hell that is, cost them £304. Cruise control was £299. PDK three-spoke sports steering wheel with shift paddles, £283. That seems like a bargain. Get yourself some shift paddles for £283, but if you want to have your mobile phone connect to it, £445. Quid. Crazy. Porsche crest embossed on head restraint, £138. Wheel centres with full colour Porsche crest. 110 pounds. Floor mats were 73 pounds and top tinted windscreen was 68 pounds. The total price for this car was just shy of 50,000 pounds, including the VAT. Now, it's saying that the cap clean price for this is 17,750. If I have a quick look at Auto Trader, where I've done a retail check, it tells us the popularity for this is 29 out of 100, which for this sort of car, a sports car, is not bad at all. And it tells us the retail price is £25,581. What's everyone else selling theirs for? There's only two others for sale. Motor House of Shipley, I don't know them. Cubic Cars, I know them because I see him on car sales groups and he does TikTok, so you should check out his TikTok. Shout out Cubic Cars. And they are at 100.84% uh, and 100 0.87% because they're 31,495 and 25,495. Cubic cars is a very similar mileage. 
it's 5,000 less than the one we'd be having. So I think we would want to be 25,495. That would make us 99.66. Therefore, the best value in the country. I want to have at least four grand out of this, which means the maximum I should pay is £21,495. I'm going to make a note of that because in reality, that's going to be 21,000 uh, plus the fees. And I, to be quite honest, I'd like to get it for less than that. I'd like to have five in it. So my proxy bid was 20,000, but we are going to bid live, see if we can get it. Yeah, I think this would look incredible on the forecourt. It would look incredible on my driveway, to be fair. But we will see. We'll have to get it bought first. It's in Misham, which is about two and a half hours away. So Macaulay would have a lovely little drive up there to pick it up. Um, but we've got to buy it first. So join us. It is currently, I think, about 30 lots away. 28, uh, which will be 20 minutes. We won't make you wait that long. We'll be back in a second. All right, here we go. 21 we can go up to, but I'd rather not. See what it starts at. Seventeen. I haven't even in yet, and it's still at eighteen two. Right, let's have eight. Um, I'm going to have to go, and I might even not get it then. 20 and a half, that's me. £20,500 means we got it for 21 all in. Right, let's go back to our pricing. So, say I've got that for 21. Oh, that's not right. 21 all in should have about four and a half thousand pounds of profit in it. It sounds a lot, but actually for a 25 grand car, it's not a huge amount. But I'm excited to get it. So uh, I think that's one we're going to go and send Macaulay to go and get. So the next step in this video will be Macaulay collecting it. And then we'll see you when he gets back with it. See you then. Okay, so before we do pick up the car, I need to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, which is Vehicle Score, who are always there to help me when it comes to buying cars. I can input our registration in here and it will give us a score from one to 999 on how good the car is based on its age, MOT history, mileage, and a load of other factors. So if we chuck ours in, which is Delta X-Ray 13, November Yankee Oscar, it will give us a score, which it says is 736 out of 999. That's 96 above average, and it says it's good. Our age is 11 years, 65,000 miles, MIT comments are good, yearly mileage. It's around about 6,000 miles, which is, you know, that's not bad for one of these things, is it? Score insights, long-term owner, recent MIT pass rate's high, mileage is between 50 and 80, and average yearly mileage is perfect. Bad bits, the vehicle's over 10 years old. But we already knew that. I see they've added in a new section here, which you can jump to, the vehicle details, estimates, vehicle performance, and MOT history, as well as their insurance tips section which is very handy if you're struggling with the price of insurance at the moment. But we'll go back up and let's have a look at the performance side of this bad boy. Tap to reveal that. So 271 brake horsepower, 12 months tax is gonna cost us 335 pounds and it will do naught to 60 in 5.6 seconds. There's absolutely loads of information on here, including all the MT history, which looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? Just all four tires have perished on a previous one. I think they must have been changed because they look pretty good now. We've got our AI mechanic even on here, which you can ask it, why is my Porsche making a weird noise? And it will give you an answer. But most importantly are their history checks. If you're buying a car and you're gonna hand over your hard-earned cash, then you need to be checking out whether that car's got a hidden history. You can do their cheapest report, which is £2.97, all the way up to the ultimate report plus, which is £11.97. But don't forget, if you use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, you'll get 20% off, making it just £9.58, I believe. That will tell you everything from whether it's been imported, exported, whether it's been seen at a salvage auction, uh, whether it's got any finance outstanding on it, whether it's a category vehicle, a category C or C, uh, whether it's been insurance write-off, uh, whether it's marked as stolen or ever it has been, whether it's been used as a taxi, colour change, mileage clocking, all that sort of stuff, as well as £10,000 worth of data guarantee should anything crop up that wasn't on that report. I highly recommend doing it. Get yourself bought, it's really easy to do. 
and you can save yourself some money with that code shifting metal 20. With the hat or without the hat? I look like a proper recovery driver with this, don't I? Hello, welcome. It's it's Macaulay, the recovery dash delivery dash a bit of everything person. Um, I am here today picking up a Porsche Cayman 2.7 PKD Coupe. PDK, my apologies. Um, yeah, let's go. It's really, it's really busy, really busy in this PCA today. So I'm gonna try and not take up too much time because I'm already taking up too much space. Lovely, lovely, lovely white. It's a shame it's covered in bird poo. But, yeah, wheels really good. Sounds absolutely lovely. Right, let's get this thing on there. The plan is, is to back it up just before we start touching the trailer. Then I'll jump out and have a little look. The worst part about Porsche is they've got a big booty. Yeah. God, this is tight. <laughs> We're just spinning up. We are just spinning up the wheels. We've got to give it a bit of a run up. Problem is, I've spun up. I've sent it left. Right, I mean, so it's come off. Reposition. Right, I've got it. I've got it. What am I on? Let's drive. I want neutral. Right, I've got this. Here we go. Right, reverse. Right, let's see how that looked. A bit, I'm a bit skew left. Alright, so we look, shall we? Ah, oh, tons of room. Tons and tons of room. A car this is I've been wanting to try one of these for ages because it just seemed like mega value for what you get now and I still think they look like a really modern and kind of aggressive sporty sports car this is the kind of I guess base engine 2.7 flat 6 makes 270 horsepower 271 I think brake horsepower and it's packed full of features it actually feels Compared to say like a 997 Porsche 911 like we've got in stock, very modern. Uh, rather than having the five circular cluster gauges, you've got three, but in that you've got this end circle cluster that does an LCD or LED sat nav. You can have all kinds of other things through there. Your phone, Bluetooth, your radio settings, it'll tell you your uh, vehicle temperature, your oil pressure, in bar your trip computer your fuel gauge that's one thing that a little criticism that while you've got the navigation map up you can't see your fuel gauge so you have to navigate away from it but it is pretty so i can't argue with that i think the marked advantage of this over the older generations is the pdk gearbox which 
I'm told is very good and from my limited driving experience of it now does seem to be the case now I could waffle a load more about how you've got sport modes controls for your exhaust controls for your spoiler traction control how you got a nice satellite navigation system in the middle as well but I think what we all want to see in here is this thing driving like it was intended to be driven express how good this thing sounds. Doesn't how snappy those changes are and you get the little pops and on the overrun. I don't know if you were to pick it up but you get lots of crackling and burbling. Of course oh you must have been able to hear that. Incredible. And it's not your horrible Fiesta ST popcorn map. Oh, it's muted and subtle and... Oh, it just sounds incredible. Oh, it's like a gun going off between gear changes. This, I think, could well be my favourite car I've ever had at Barrow Motors. So much drama. But what's really amazing is it's just incredibly easy to drive. So flat through the corners. You haven't got any of those issues you have with a 911 where it can feel a bit like the tail's wagging the dog because you've got the engine up behind you. echo off or something on a gear change. <laughs> now I have to admit it's not the fastest thing in the world. Oh dear that was a silly mistake. That could be a good thing. It feels like you're driving a supercar. It sounds like it. But it's slightly less risky, I would say. Obviously a 911 of this era. Let's just put it, while we talk, let's just take it out of sport mode so it's slightly more civilized. Uh, a 911 of this era or an older era is gonna be kind of more aggressive, more sporty faster more powerful but that might not necessarily be what you want if you're actually going to use this and you kind of want to enjoy all those noises of accelerating changing gear all that sort of stuff having a little bit less power and being a little bit more manageable it's probably a good thing and allow you to enjoy it a bit more i don't think anyone's going to hear this thing flying by and say oh yeah but rather have the 911 So this car cost us £20,500 there or thereabouts by the time we've got it back. Delivery, indemnity fees, all that sort of stuff. Um, I think we're going to have to get the wheels refurbished because they've got a lacquer peel going on all over them. So we will get those repowder coated and I think black's still the way to go. I think it, this car looks absolutely stunning with the black wheels on the white bodywork. I think we need to do a couple of stone chips in the windscreen, might end up even being a windscreen, but I think we can do some pretty good repairs on those. And now that I've cleaned it up, it's all looking good. And I think we can still have a pretty decent margin out of this. We've got it up for about 25 and a half thousand pounds. 
let's say we get 25 for it and it will have cost us 21 ish we'll still be doing pretty well and i will have had the opportunity to own one of these amazing caimans which i genuinely hope won't be the last one that i do own because it's a seriously nice car sounds like that for 25 grand unreal all the way up to 7,000 how snappy this gearbox as well is and the paddles are so nice to use so so snappy in comparison to the old tiptronic Porsche gearboxes Ridiculous. Whoever ends up buying this is going to be a very happy person indeed. Well, I could do this all day, but that would bore you to death, I'm sure. So that'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. It's free to do. And I'm giving away a free £2,000 tag for your watch to one of my subscribers when we hit that 75,000 benchmark. If you want to have a bit of a nose and a perv at this car, if it's still available at the time, it will be on our website, barometers.co.uk. Or if you fancy something V8, perhaps, for a very small price of only £5, then check out my raffle website, feelgoodcompetitions.com, where you could win an Audi RS5 for just five pounds or in fact four pounds fifty if you use the code toby10 that is it for this video i am going home to come to terms with the fact that i've now fallen in love with this car and i'm gonna have to sell it even though i don't want to but hopefully that will lead to me buying another one that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time